Hello, students, and welcome to our next lecture on sentence errors. So let's begin. Well, we're going to talk about four different kinds of sentence errors. Uh, firstly, fragments, comma splices, run-ons, and parallelism. Okay, now, why is it important that we need to know these different types of sentence errors? Well, firstly, when you know the different types of sentence errors that are possible, you are more aware when you're writing. And so, first and foremost, you learn to avoid making such mistakes uh, in writing. And second, which is also very important, we learn how to fix such errors, right? Which is what we're going to do today. So, firstly, fragments. Now, fragment... A fragment is an incomplete sentence. And how is it incomplete? So it may be missing uh, the subject of the sentence, or it could mis be missing the verb of the sentence, or it is an incomplete thought. Okay, the thought is just not complete, or like we've discussed before, um, it could be a dependent clause on its own, which cannot stand alone. Okay, therefore being incomplete. So let's look at some examples. The first one. Can't wait to get married. But who can't wait to get married? So the subject of this sentence is missing. Or she angry. Okay, this sentence is missing the verb be, which is supposedly is or was. Okay, so she is angry, she was angry, but not she angry. And third, because we like ice cream, sweets, and cakes. And it ends just like that. So... Therefore, it's an incomplete thought. We have a subject, we have the verb, but it's not complete on its own. It is a dependent clause. So, um, also be careful, right? So, the third example is actually a good example of um, dependent clauses being incomplete on its own. So, be careful when writing dependent clauses with subordinators, like because, although, since, who, that, and which, it has to be followed by or accompanied with uh, an independent clause, okay, or with coordinators as well. Okay, so watch out for these kinds of clauses where it could be incomplete, right? So, these are examples of fragments. But Sometimes, there's an exception, okay? So sometimes, professional writers use fragments for emphasis and some drama effect, apparently. So, um, however, um, that's with professional writers. For us, it is a good idea to avoid um, these kinds of sentences until you have some ability to compose or write um, grammatically error-free uh, sentences. Okay, so, for example, somebody writes, Oh, she finally met the man of her dreams in real life this time. He was gorgeous with honey-colored hair, hazel eyes, and a tanned complexion. Absolutely breathtaking. So, you see, these sentences in um, un that are underlined are actually not really sentences because they are fragments. They are incomplete. There is no subject, no verb, and um, it is an incomplete thought. Okay, but it, it is exceptional in these cases because it has a certain um, reason for being there, for emphasis and for effect. Okay, now, those fragments are not really accurate in writing, so how do we fix them? Okay, so one of the ways we can fix fragments is, of course, to expand it into sentences. So, whatever it is missing, we put that in. Missing a subject, missing a verb or the clause where it's not complete, we add that in. So, these are some examples. Confusing and distracting to readers. Incomplete. Sentence fragments are confusing and distracting to readers. Complete. Okay, because they are confusing and distracting to readers, mm, it's incomplete. Correct? Because they are confusing and distracting to readers, writers should generally avoid sentence fragments. So you add in the independent clause because the dependent clause can't stand on its own. Alright, how else can we fix it? We can incorporate the fragment into a nearby sentence. So the sentences before or after it, you can put the fragment and incorporate it into the sentence. Okay, for example, in the first one, um, then excited wagging his tail is an incomplete, uh, is a fragment, right? So we want to incorporate that 
into the sentences that we have. So the dog was waiting in the window when his owner got home. Complete. Excited, he wagged his tail and went to greet her at the door. So you complete it with the subject and the verb and you put it into the following sentence. And um, giving examples. There are many things I want for my birthday. Full stop. Such as a game, a toy, and money. Now, such as a game, a toy, and money, yeah, you're giving examples, but it is a fragment. So what do we do? You put it, incorporate it into the nearby sentence. What about comma splices? What are these? Okay, so comma splices basically means it's an incorrect use of a comma. And you use a comma to join two or more independent clauses together in a sentence. Now, from what we understand here, joining two independent clauses with just a comma is incorrect. It's wrong. Okay, so independent clauses can stand alone. So you cannot just use one single comma to separate them. That's not enough and it's incorrect. Okay, so let's look at some examples. I can't wait to get married. One independent clause. I'm excited, also one independent clause. So you can't just put a comma in between. That sentence, okay, shows an example of a comma splice error where you join, okay, these three examples where you join two independent clauses with just a comma and that's not right. Okay, so how do we fix these kinds of comma splices? Well, if the ideas are connected or they're related somehow, all you need to do is just replace the comma with a semicolon, okay, which is um, a little comma with a dot on the top, okay, because it is stronger than just a comma, okay. But you must be careful not to use a semicolon to separate an independent clause from a dependent clause, okay. We've talked about types of sentences. When you want to separate independent clause from the dependent clause, you just use a comma. So this is only um, in the case of two independent clauses. You replace it with a semicolon if the ideas are connected. For example, we have hundreds of pages of reading to do. It will be impossible to finish it all before the exam. So your ideas are kind of connected. What you do is you just replace the comma because if you put a comma, it is an error of a comma splice error. But you change the comma to a semicolon and voila, perfectly formed sentence. <laughs> right. Okay. What other ways can we fix comma splices? Well, simplest is to actually divide these sentences into smaller ones. Right. There are already two independent clauses and can stand on their own. So just divide them. Um, you can have it with or without transitional words like however, hence, thus, therefore, that's optional if you want to somehow connect those ideas together. So you have some examples there, right? She wish she had some ice cream. Finish it there. Put it one independent clause, one sentence. Then continue with because it was raining, comma, she asked her roommate to drive her to the store, but she refused. Okay, or you can add in transitional words like Mommy is upset, full stop, one sentence. Hence, we must be careful, right? What other ways? Well, you can insert a coordinator, right? Because we're talking about two independent clauses. So you put in the uh, appropriate coordinator, like I gave you the acronym FANBOYS, any of those, okay? But remember, THEN, the word THEN, it's not really a coordinator and you can't use it without a coordinator of its own. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Um, I tried to clean the house, but I gave up and watched soap operas instead. There you're connecting the ideas by talking about contrasting ideas. Okay, so by adding a coordinator, you can make the sentence not a comma splice error. Okay, or I repaired all the structural errors in my paper, then turned it in. Then, yeah, because it is actually, then I turned it in is an independent clause on its own. So you can't just have a comma there. You have to add in maybe a coordinator, right? Or separate it into another sentence. Now, what about run-ons? Looking at the name, you know, it's something to do with running. Okay, it's running together. So several main clauses, you have few main ideas there that is strung together, you put them together, without proper punctuation. So the sentence is like running together, 
as if it is one, when it shouldn't be one sentence. And what happens is when you have so many run-ons, it interrupts the rhythm of your writing and it makes too much information in such a small space. So let's have some examples. It's like, I can't wait to get married, I'm so excited. Run on. Okay, there's no proper punctuation at all, although you have two main ideas here. She's angry, she doesn't like interruptions. Okay, we like ice cream cakes and sweets and we all like types of desserts. So yeah, it's these are called run-ons because you have different ideas and they should be separated into different sentences or put a semicolon or whatever, but it's strung together without any proper punctuation. Okay, so these are run-ons and how do we fix them? So first, you have to separate the independent clauses into two sentences, of course. If you can, separate them, separate them. Don't put them all together, okay? Not, they gossip about many things at lunch, they always have the most to say about their co-workers. No, okay? Put proper punctuation, separate them into separate sentences. Or, like a comma splice, right? You replace them with a semicolon, right? So if you notice, actually run-ons are very similar to comma splices. The only difference with uh, the two is that a comma splice is just separated with just a comma. So at least you have some punctuation, although incorrect. Run-ons, just no punctuation at all. Okay, so here you just replace it with a semicolon. Separate the two ideas, put a semicolon there between two independent clauses. Okay, or what you could do is you could subordinate one of the cause clauses. So when you subordinate it, it means it's a little bit less important. So you can do that by using subordinators, words like although, while, because, whereas, and so many others. But of course, remember when you talk about um, subordinating the clauses, it's become a dependent clause. Then you must uh, remember to add the commas where it's needed. Okay, so for example, the correct one, although they gossiped about many things at lunch, uh -huh, you've subordinated that sentence, so it's become a dependent clause. And after a dependent clause, you should have a comma. So although they gossiped about many things at lunch, comma, they always have the most to say about their co-workers. Now, the only thing to be careful about is when you use subordinators, right, you subordinate the clause, you make it a dependent clause that's not as important as the independent clause, then you may change the meaning a little bit. So you have to be careful that that is actually what you mean to say. All right. Last one, we have parallelism. Now, this one may be a little bit difficult to understand, but parallelism basically means you have to make it parallel. Okay, the same. So it means being consistent when expressing ideas or items in a series. Okay, by using grammatically equal sentence elements. Okay, confusing? Let's look at some examples. The cloth was washed, hanging, and to dry. Three different forms of verbs there. Okay, so that's being not consistent and it's grammatically unequal. Look at another example. James keeps his money in the bottles outside tables. Inconsistent. My hobbies are hiking, reading, and to go swimming. Unequal and uh, inconsistent. All right, so how do we fix that? Okay, so firstly, you have to make sure that the verbs and the articles or prepositions that you use are repeated for each time. That's one option. Or you use it just before the first item. Okay? If it's not the same, then you have to add them in. For example, the cloth was washed hanging and to dry. You have three different forms of the verbs which are all wrong. You want to make them consistent. So the cloth was washed, it was hung, and was dried. So you repeat the verbs part. Okay? Or you can say the cloth was washed, hung, and dried. So you only have the verb right before the first item. But basically, you are saying the cloth was washed, the cloth was hung, the cloth was dried. Alright, okay. Another example, James keeps his money in the bottles outside and tables. Very different. Okay, what you can do or can say is James keeps his money in the bottles, in the drawers, and in the shoes. 
So you're repeating the verbs, the articles, the prepositions, and they're all the same. Okay? Or James keeps his money outside, in the bottles, and on the tables. So if they are different, right, the prepositions that are used are different, you have to add them in. If you don't, if you look at the incorrect sentence here, Right? If you don't add them in, you're basically saying James keeps his money in the bottles, James keeps his money in the outside, and James keeps his money in the tables, which is incorrect. So if the prepositions aren't the same, separate them, make them different. Right? How else can we fix parallelism? So one thing is do not mix gerunds. Okay, what do you mean by gerunds? We have verbs with ing and they function like a noun. For example, I like swimming. So it is ing, verb ing, but it functions like a noun. Okay, so those are gerunds. Okay, and infinitives are the words to plus the verb. To go, to walk, to try, to dance. Okay, those are infinitives. So the example here was my hobbies are hiking, reading, and to go swimming. So there's a mix of our gerunds and infinitives. So we're not supposed to do that. Keep it all consistent. If you want to do gerunds, my hobbies are hiking, reading, and swimming. All the same. Or if you want to use them all infinitives, my hobbies are to hike, to read, and to swim. Or if you don't want to put the the two, if you don't want to repeat it, you can say my hobbies are to hike, read, and swim. Right? Um, what else? Okay, descriptive words must be balanced or in the same form. Okay, so it has to be in the same form. For example, instead of saying express their ideas creatively with imagination and has innovation, all different forms, right? Put them all the same. Express their ideas creatively imaginatively and innovatively all the same forms okay similarly if you look at the second example a student should be punctual obedient and respect their elders so now this is a little bit different this one is an adjective adjective this is a verb so change it to respectful for it to be in the same form what else um okay with forms of Either or, neither nor, not only this, but also that. Keep your ideas parallel in the forms as well. Okay, for example, she either sends her children for tuition or teach them herself. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. You want to say she sends the children or she teaches them herself. Okay, so keep the forms the same. Right? So... Yeah, that's about it. Um, I hope you get it and we'll do more exercises in class. So thank you and I'll see you in the next lesson.